Now let's uh, see how we deal with uh, the other matters that we have before us now this morning. Um, right. You are aware that uh, three South Africans have been in the country and they came to train security detail, private security detail of the flag bearer and the uh, vice presidential candidate of the New Patriotic Party, Nanado Dankwa, and uh, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, and their wives as well. Now, they were in the process of the training uh, in a hotel, and they got arrested by the BNI. They were taken to court eventually after the uh, after many days, after many days, that's more than 48 hours. And then in court on Thursday, they were granted bail, <laughs> but somehow the bail, uh, they are spending the bail still in BNI cells, we understand. So these are the issues that have come up as far as this matter is concerned. We'll look at it from various angles. Um, Re regarding what was required to be done before those people could be brought in. Uh, did they need some special clearance that they did not? What does the law say about um, the private security arrangements and w what part of it did they breach? I uh, will read to you the, the, the charge sheets and the facts that were put before the court and also largely deal with the matter of uh, protection, security protection for the presidential candidates and their vice uh, presidential candidates. Also joining us on the line, as I indicated to you earlier, is Dr. Emmanuel Kwesi Enning. Thank you very much, Dr. Enning, for joining us on the phone. Well, that's a great pleasure. Great to have you. Now, uh, maybe I should rather start with Dr. Enning. Dr. Enning, um, these uh, three South Africans, we understand, um, are not new to Ghana. They've been in this country before to do the same business. Why is it different this time round from where you sit? I've heard you say um, it was wrong. The, the NPP should simply admit. No, not just that it was wrong. But if we look at it from the legal side, from the South African side first, um, there are specific regulations from the South African side concerning the activities of their nationals, particularly their security-related nationals, in providing the kind of assistance that, that they provided, not only in Ghana. I mean, historically, in the aftermath of their independence, South African demobilized security forces mm. because of their counterinsurgency experiences in Angola, um, Mozambique, Lesotho, Botswana, Zambia, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe, um, were well sought after in the mid and early 1990s to undertake counterinsurgency activities, particularly also in West Africa, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Guinea, and in some instances, um, La Côte d'Ivoire, in which they use Ghana as a base. Because of the history and the particularly brutal manner in which these individuals, who in the early 90s um, were actually related to two major companies, executive outcomes and sandlines, then led the South African government around 1998 to seek to regulate, you know, the activities of such individuals through the Regulation of Foreign Military Assistance Act and then the amendment to that act in 1998. And it's fairly specific. It looks down on the activities of the mobilized soldiers and police officers, both in countries that are in conflict, but also in situations or providing assistance to individuals or organizations in particular countries that may be perceived as threatening to national sovereignty and national stability. So that is the context within which I, 
thought we ought to be a little bit more cautious in bringing in people with such kinds of expertise. I thought the focus rather the focus rather was the focus rather was what law have they breached in their coming into the country or coming along with whatever materials that they brought along and undertaking the process of training that they were involved in. Well, I haven't seen the charge sheet, but from what is publicly available, mm. the information that is publicly available. Now, there are three regulations governing the activities of private security um, organizations or individuals in Ghana. One is Act 350 of 1970. That basically says, you know, you know uh, private organizations can provide security, granted that they register, blah, 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 blah. Then I think there are two legislative instruments, if I remember correctly, of 1573 and I think 1594, that seeks to regulate the activities of these uh, companies. Mm. Two points that may be of importance or interest to this conversation is the limitation of foreign involvement in the private security industry. It doesn't state whether we are banned from owning these companies or from by, or, or for providing training. It's fairly loose, and I think it leads to all kinds of interpretation. The second that may be of interest to, to this conversation also relates to whether they can provide, no, that local or Ghanaian private security actors cannot be armed while they are on duty, or that the company cannot arm them. So most Ghanaian security companies have provided, you know, K9-related training, but most, almost all of them don't provide uh, close combat. They don't provide uh, training um, in weapons uh, handling. Mm -hmm. So it now relates to what types of equipment these guys brought in and the types of training that they provided. And I think that is where the argument or the conversation should be. All Tangential right. to mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is, of course, the broader issue as to what the state can and must do with respect to politically exposed persons. Okay, we'll come you know, to that. We'll power. come to that because yeah. we'll separate that for a proper perspective discussion. Thank you, and hold on for us again. Thank you for agreeing sure. to, to be on the phone with us for uh, this discussion. Now, um, it, it, Dr. Kwesi just referred to the charge sheet, and the charge sheet um, that was brought against them, these are the charges that were brought against them in the court. And this is uh, Republic versus uh, Ahmed Sheikh Haziz um, Nlungazilele Jokani and three Denver Naidu. Forgive me if I'm not getting the names correctly. Now, the, the charges are count one. Um, it talks about conspiracy to commit crime contrary to section 23 of the Criminal Offenses uh, Code 1960 Act uh, 29. And here are the particulars. Uh, it is important for the purpose of this discussion, so I'm going to go through that. It says that, um, okay, one, Ahmed Naz Naziz, security advisor, and then Jokani, consultant, and then Denver, security trainer. For that, you between the 15th and 20th of March, 2016, <coughs> uh, in the Greater Accra region circuit and within the jurisdiction of this court, did agree or act together with a common purpose to commit crime to wit unlawful training of 15 men. So that's count one, unlawful training of 15 men. Then count two is unlawful training contrary to section 189 of the Criminal Offenses Code. I'm reading it as they have stated. I would say criminal offenses Criminal Offences, uh, Criminal and Other Offences Act, 1960, Act 29. Particulars that these three men, for that you between the 15th of March 2016 
and in the Aguna Dunquao. In Aguna Dunquao, I, I find also that in the first search uh, uh, particulars, uh, Greater Accra is cancelled and uh, okay, Accra is put in there. And then in this one, it is Aguna Dunquao and Greater Accra is cancelled. And within the jurisdiction of this court, you did meet with other persons for the purpose of military training or exercise without permission. Military training or exercise without permission. And then there is count three. Count three says making false declarations contrary to a particular law, which is section uh, 52.1 of the Immigration Service Act 2000, uh, 2000 Act 573. And it says that for that, uh, on the 13th of January 2016, at the Ghana High Commission in South Africa, made false declaration that you intend to visit Ghana for business purpose, for which you were issued with visa <coughs> numbers so so and so. Uh, declaration you knew, a declaration you knew to be false at the time of making same. Then count four um, says that count four the particulars the, the the charge is this making false declaration contrary to section fifty two one again uh, that's the same uh, section that I referred to earlier and say for that on the tenth of March twenty sixteen at the Ghana High Commission in South Africa made false declaration that you intend to visit Ghana for business purposes for which you were issued visa number so so and so a declaration you knew to be false at the time of making same and the final count is count five making false declaration contrary to the same law i have referred to earlier and that uh, for for that on the 11th of march 2016 at the ghana high commission in south africa made false declaration that you intend to visit ghana for business purpose for which you were issued visa number so so and so a declaration you knew to be false at the time of making uh same and then <clears throat> i'll just read the brief facts because we'll get into the aspect of the court uh more particularly it says that um, the accused persons are retired South African police officers, <clears throat> sorry, between the month of January 2016 and March 2016, the accused persons applied for visa at the Ghana High Commission in South Africa on the pretext of doing business in Ghana. Based on the information given to the High Commissioner, the accused persons were granted their visas. They arrived in Ghana in the month of March 2016. Few days ago, information reached security agencies that some people were training five, five people in military tactics. I think they would have corrected this earlier. Uh, five people in military tactics at Agona Dunqua. They were arrested and during investigation, what do you say? Diakwa. 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 Agona Diakwa, sorry. They were arrested and during investigation, the accused person stated that they were brought into the country from South Africa by one Captain Edmond Kojokoda, retired, and Captain Kwesi Aqua, retired, to train new patriotic party MPP security personnel together uh, towards 2016 general election in Ghana. Further investigation at Ghana Immigration Service revealed that the accused persons um, failed disembarkation forms indicating that they were in Ghana to do business. Investigation is still ongoing. And these were the charges and the explanation to the charges. Now, let me hear from you, uh, Egbert. Uh, I think we will deal with the prosecution separately. But from what you understand, mm -hmm. have there not been some breaches of law in the manner in which they were brought in and to undertake the process that has, they were seen to under, undergo. There has not been any breach of any laws of the Republic. When you are going to leave Ghana, for example, by way of a visa application to go to the UK, US, or any country, when you are filling a visa form, you are asked, 
the purpose of your visit. Are you, is it an immigrant visa? Of course, no. Is it for pleasure? You can say yes. Is it for tourism? You can say yes. And is it for business? You can say yes. As the Ghana High Commission and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, in filling visa forms to Ghana, what are the various heads under which people can, let's say, supply information as to the purpose of their visit? In some jurisdictions, they give you a restricted regime, business, pleasure, education, conference, blah, 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 blah. If for whatever reason, they feel that, well, human nature being what it is, sometimes people visit for reasons beyond the scope of what we provided. They ask you <coughs> others. Then you use pen and paper to write. I mean, to, to write it out. Does a Ghana visa form have this kind of queries? If it doesn't have, and you have limited people to business, tourism, uh, 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 pleasure, education. education, and somebody looks at what you have provided and says that, OK, um, from what you've done, I've been invited by a security company. I am coming to work. So it is a business trip I'm on. What, what, has, what, has, what has been done wrong here? You see, people have jumped onto a certain tangent and are doing and saying all kinds of things, all kinds of things, as if we forget that the first law of nature is self-preservation. Nana Kufuadu has been elected flag bearer, if I'm not mistaken, for at least the last two years. Has the Ghana police service considered that by reason of his election, he is a politically exposed person, together with Dr. Baumia and their spouses, said that few weeks or months after their election, security arrangements ought to have been put in place. You haven't done that. Ordinary people in Ghana, ordinary people, and I say this not without any disrespect, know that they are sitting targets for armed robbers and all kinds of people. So people have taken their own security into their own hands. It shows a certain failure of state. It shows a certain failure of state. People have drivers today driving them in Accra, who are, who even though are drivers, are bodyguards, snipers. You attempt to touch this big man who is sitting in the back of the car, he will snipe at you first. So what has the MPP and for that matter, Nana Kufado done wrong? Donald Trump, what the United States, in any civilized country, when a person even offers himself to run for office from that very first day, the state security apparatus okay, takes Edna, control. You are going into another angle of the discussion we will have very about well. states providing security yes. for yes. presidential candidates yes. and their yes. uh, running mates. Yes. But you make the point that no law has been breached. No law has been They breached. made declarations that they were coming to do business. Yes. And that what they are doing is business. Yes. End of story. Yes. You see, okay. Samson, mm. why I say that they were coming to do business is this. The accoutrements that they brought into this country were shipped, sorry, were airlifted and came through the Kotoka International Airport. They were cleared. The necessary duties were paid. Samson, I can tell you some of the things that came. Yes, we are interested. T-shirts, golf shirts, socks, cargo pants. You know cargo pants? Those big shorts with side pockets. Mm -hmm. Yes. You are trendy. You know that one. <laughs> they had uh, duffel bags. They had uh, cones, skipping ropes. They also had boots and canvas. They also had paint guns. Paint gun. If you know what a paint gun is. It is non-lethal. It is virtually a toy. It is shot at you and then the paint, you know, spreads. Something. It goes on and on. Extension cords. Mosquito coils. Mosquito coils. Boots. It goes on. Something. The list is there. Printing paper. A4 printing paper. Brown envelopes, something. Water bottles, files, stationery. 
carry bags, empty cylinders. Samson, even when rape became what and, it and became. This is what was declared. Yes, this is what was declared. Pay. Yes. Uh, and what are, you, what are you reading to me? That is what I'm reading to you. Okay. Consigned to Delta Security from the company that these gentlemen work for. It is there. It is in the government records. Government has taken mm. money. Oh, mm. oh, Kuku Bako has the, mm. the, the thing. Oh, okay. Okay. You understand? Mm. Okay. Good. As okay. usual. This is an interception. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? So. Not, not a leak. You know, it's not a leakage. It's not a leakage. It's, a, it's an interception. It's an interception. It's a, it's I see. A, actually, uh, yeah. after the <laughs> mosquito coils and yes. the books, yes. they are supposed to have brought along some rulers, yes. whiteboard marker yes. packs, files, eraser, yes. whiteboard cleaner liquid, yes. red pens, yeah. black pens, yeah. brown envelopes, yeah. file dividers, yeah. highlighters, mm -hmm. stapler and box staples, mm -hmm. uh, folders. Uh, they also brought what's uh, sunblock lotion, yeah. A4 printing paper, and this was declared. And the grand total was twenty one thousand two hundred and twenty five uh, rand. Yes. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Uh, so. And this was consigned to which uh, company? Yes. Uh, is, that, is that the top? Yes. At the yes. Very top? Uh, is that not the no. Delta yeah. yes. to Delta Security Services? Good. Delta House, Good. 3 Offing Avenue, Good. off Odanta Street, Good. Asylum Down, Accra. Um, I like my cameras Did to, you see any to bomb? zoom a bit on this. Did uh, you see any grenade? Uh, Did you see any AK-47 uh, Guzi mm. or any military weapon? Mm. No. I, in this list? No, I haven't. Uh, Good. Okay, so this is uh, supposed to be... Uh, the authentic declaration that they made yes. and for which duty was paid for the various yes. things that they had to bring yes. into this country. Yes. For those of you who have the benefit of the television, you are seeing the things that were brought. We are displaying all of them for you to see so you can help us, you know, uh, put the discussion in the best of perspective. Uh, thank you very much. So you are seeing uh, the camera zoom, zooming on uh, some of the things that have been put out there. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and thanks to uh, Kukubaku. Um, so, I'm not sure he intercepted this one. There was no interception. Um, now, now it was leaked. <laughs> yes, uh, it was Somehow it happened. It was not leaked. Now, yeah. uh, Felix. Yeah. Um, oh, I thought, I thought I was rounding up. Samson. Okay, do. So, so Samson, mm. in sum, and I'm sure that we'll have a second shot at this. So, this is a needless, if you like, provocation. It is, it is, it is. It shows signs of a government that is G3, that wants to make political capital out of even routine everyday occurrences. Security. A week after this country has been put on terror alert. You're yes. saying this is a needless provocation. It is a needless provocation, Samson. I say so because in intelligence, in intelligence, there's always the rashes that come in. But there's always an imperative need for synthesis okay. before you strike. Okay. Because it is also a national security concern mm. when you act in a provocative manner for a section of the populace to feel that, look, you are needlessly suppressing them. Okay. It so, is also national okay. security. Thank you. Now, Felix, uh, what, what do you have to say? Because um, the matter, unfortunately, has become a banter between the NPP and the NDC. And you seem to see or hear NDC and government people speaking for the BNI rather than the BNI speaking for itself. Uh, something. I, I think that this kind of commentary is unfortunate. The NDC is a stakeholder in Ghanaian affairs. We reserve the right to comment on national happenings. So the fact that we have done so does not mean that we are speaking for the BNI. Mm. Unfortunately, the <laughs> BNI doesn't have a public relations outfit, which is something that going forward, they may want to look at addressing. There are also advantages for actually having the status quo remain. But there are also government officials, including myself, who have the capacity to check with the BNI in order to learn about exactly what they are doing so that we can speak to the issues factually. So I don't think that it is fair to brand NDC activists speaking on this matter as spokespersons of the BNI. Again, those who have spoken on behalf of the MPP in this matter can also not be branded as spokespersons. There are some who are not members of the MPP. They may be sympathizers mm. or surrogates, but they cannot be said to be spokespersons. And I think that the way that we carry our debate in this country is completely unfortunate. That should be cut out. Second. 
There is no self-respecting security agency anywhere in the world that will not take the action that the BNI took upon learning that you have persons from another country engaged in some form of training in an obscure part of this country, especially given the heightened security awareness around South Africa and around, sorry, around West Africa and around the world. So the BNI did no wrong in swooping in mm. to undertake the exercise to find out exactly what was happening. Indeed, they would have been remiss had they not acted on the information that they got. The other point that needs to be considered is the, or are the explanations that have come forth from the NPP themselves regarding why these people are in this country. First of all, an attempt was made to distance the party and the flag bearer from this. Nano Bribwine, Deputy General Secretary of the NPP, said that it had nothing to do with the party or their flag bearer. That turned out to be incorrect. Really? Yes, it's on record. Second, there were members of the party or accredited spokespersons, at least Nana Kumia, issued a public statement in which he conceded that these people are in the country at the behest of the MPP. Indeed, there was no mention of Delta security in that official statement. Um, subsequent to that, they have other renditions that they were brought in for crowd control because Nana Akufuado and Baumia have become so popular. Mm. Then but only- You have seen the facts. Yes, no, mm. but, but only two days ago, mm. the national chairman held a press conference and claimed that it was because of an imminent plot by government and its affiliates. Of course, excuse my language, but that is a pure lie. It's the most incompetent oh. and abysmal defense that has been attempted That's in a matter. <laughs> How do you go and make such an accusation and fail to provide any kind of evidence? From where I sit, I know it to be a complete lie. Mm. Nobody in government or affiliated to it, as far as we know, has any plot to harm Nanado. Nanado has been working around this country for decades. He has been in active politics for decades. Mm. And that's, nobody has got any proof. Any to a, any proof. A, a party spokesperson or even an executive member in Kumasi or Ashanti region oh. who has uh, gone on radio to say that they were sharpening their cutlasses in readiness to which the party found Samson, Samson. necessary to reprimand. Absolutely. So that actually buttresses the point I'm making. That if a, a, an errant party member goes to make threats, not specific threats, and the party sanctions him, that is a mark of a responsible party. It is not the sign of a party that wants to harm anybody. Again, the MPP have even claimed that there is a radio presenter called Mugabe or mm. Munti FM who had gone to say that Nanado will die by June. And that is, a, if I just say Nanako Mia's official statement, Sam, I can tell you that that claim itself is a blatant lie. Mm. That gentleman has never mm. made those statements. Uh, it was, him. no, you please, please, him. you see, we need to be factual. It is one of these no, fabrications that you do on social media, just like the one they did about the interior minister, that he had said something about the people not being uh, culpable for what they have been accused of on South African radio when he had not done that. Mugabe has never said that. He has publicly denied it. Indeed, the MPP has no record of him saying so. And if they do, I challenge them to publicly produce it. So you cannot, on the basis of such flimsy excuses, engage in what is clearly an untenable action. Listen, Samson, as a country, and I don't think that any country can encourage it, you cannot allow a situation where political parties form private armies of some sort under the guise of protecting their leaders. Ghanaian security arrangements are set out clearly in law. There's a police service that is responsible for internal security. Okay? Mm -hmm. All of us are bound by Ghanaian law. If you have security challenges, you alert them. There are also private arrangements, clearly and strictly regulated by law. That shows how you can go about seeking private security. In fact, the MPP's own conduct mm -hmm. shows that they know that the police is the superior outfit that should be doing this job. I have seen pictures of Dr. Baumia in the Upper East region. At least in that picture, I saw three <coughs> well-armed policemen mm. following him and clearly offering him security. Again, the MPP themselves, at least on 11 occasions, have had cause to call the police to either their headquarters or other branches of their party, where their so-called internal security, invisible forces, have been actively engaged in public brawls and violent conduct. So a party like that, that has this sort of record, whose so-called internal security engage in open, violent conduct. And the pictures are there. But what you Cannot, say, you see, what let, you let say, me, like, what you me, say mm -hmm. in the face of the facts that we, we have now, what facts? The facts of what materials Again, the, I'll come the, to the, the three people see, brought it into the country. That, it is important that those, And, and mm -hmm. the facts of the history of these guys 
in this country well, let me give you, and what they do. Let me give you the history of one of them. The youngest amongst them mm. Mm, is widely traveled. He frequents Iraq very often. That is history that you cannot discount. No, please, please, you can laugh. But no self-respecting security agency will overlook such a fact. The second point is that the accoutrements that uh, uh, my big brother Kuku and Egbert okay, are talking so about. You are saying, let me understand, you are yeah. saying that if you have an individual like that who Absolutely. frequents Iraq and is coming to Ghana, and the security you become aware. To be alert. You become aware mm. of his uh, presence. Oh, please. Oh, the president is Iran. I don't think that. Go ahead. That, no, I'm just I don't think that. First of, all, first of all, you are heckling me. The president First of all, you are heckling me. Second, you know that. I apologize. You know that that comparison is completely baseless. Oh, You know that. Uh huh. The other point is that the accoutrements that my big brother Kweku and Egbert are speaking about are accoutrements that they declared. What they brought in. Have they averted their minds to the fact that when they were arrested, where they were was searched? Are they aware of other yes. accoutrements found? What was found? I can tell That's you an authority. They found military uniforms. They found accoutrement that is the sole preserve of the military. Not even the police are allowed to do that. They found sandbags. Mm? It is the military that are able to use that for purposes of training. Holy Moses. Oh, you see, you see. It is important that persons come in. Oh, no, 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 Mind you, one of the charges mm. is that they are engaged in military training, training unlawful yeah. training. Yeah. Again, they were found in possession of a dossier on a company that has a close relationship with the state agency, the Federal Commission, STL, I mean. Okay? That dossier contained detailed briefs of the profiles of key workers of STL mm -hmm. and their operations. Mm -hmm. In fact, this is my own perspective. That, that signals espionage. We are spying on an agency that has a relationship with the state agency. I'm saying no self-respecting security outfit will not act in the way that the BNI has acted. The third point, if you watch the MPP responses carefully, they are cagey or at best sketchy about who invited the people into Ghana. If you read at least the official, I, I will discount radio commentary. Okay, but I will speak about the official statements in terms of who it is that invited them. Yeah. When the I gentleman, were really clear when, 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 of course, Nana Komiya was silent. He's, he only repeated the BNI claim that is contained in the news reports that they were invited by Captain Koda. Indeed, that is what the people told them. Something. I have spoken to the BNI, and I am aware that because of the way the issues are, I'm a bit constrained because of my position in government and also the fact that the matter is in court and these matters <laughs> may come up in court. But something, one of the entities, contrary to the claims by those who are claiming that they were invited by Captain Koda and uh, Captain Aqua, one of them, one of the three people was invited by a shipping company. Yes. Another two were invited by the Dankwa Institute. Ma, uh, the shipping company, Dankwa Institute, even Captain Koda, as far as I know, do not operate security companies. By law, they cannot invite people to come and undertake this sort of training. Mm. You understand the point I'm making? And Captain Koda is on record to have admitted to the BNI that at least when they arrived, he picked them up from the airport. Again, on their disembarkation form, they indicated that they will be staying at Alisa and moving pick during their, their, their whatever business it is that they said they were going to do in Ghana. I'm not too sure whether the visa application form allows for one to indicate <laughs> other businesses. But that can be verified easily. It's not a problem. For me, it is not a material matter. Okay? Yet, they were find, found in Aguna Biakwa in El Capitano Hotel. I'm saying that no self-respecting security agency will overlook these facts. Mm. Again, the MPP's own contradictions and the many accounts and the many falsehoods that they have churned out would suggest significant levels of complicity mm. in this matter. Okay. And otherwise, what would motivate a political party, for instance, to invent what they did yesterday, that Nanado's house was under imminent raid or attack, so they have gone to mass up there. The police actually well, went... We are told that we are told that these supporters, on their own, oh, decided to go no, there. No, no, they claim that they picked up, and sometimes I'm a politician too, mm. okay? 
I am an Are you artist. saying it is the party oh, that invited see, these Samson, people Samson, to go to the Nado's house? You see, we need to be candid about these things. I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a, 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 a politician. I'm an activist. I have mobilized people. I'm telling you that supporters on their own, without serious organization, won't mass up at the house of their flag bearer when there was no occasion. So let us discount that. We, we, we were told, the police we were told, actually we were went told similar stories, for example, when NDC supporters massed up at the at the electoral commission. Samson. Okay. Samson. During Gen during Samson, election. General Mosquito, I yes. was there that day. And that they were not organized. So it is General, possible, Mo General it? Mosquito was there that day. Mm -hmm. He actually addressed that. It was a very, very peaceful convergence. You know, I was there. Mm -hmm. It was very peaceful until the police started firing warning shots with dispersion. No, it's about whether they but, went but there on their own Samson, or they were invited. You see, I just wanted Samson, to see, that let us not point. pretend that mm. those of us who are involved in politics, in pol they say that in politics everything is contrived. <laughs> no supporter will just get up and go to another house when there's no publicized event okay on now, the pretext of this okay now so, you so hold it, it is important that we right. are careful mm. and again something there's mm. a there's a, a there's a legal regime apart from the the law under which they meet you are aware of the li 1571 which has been amended by li 1573 mm. which spell are you aware for instance that the persons who are recruited so to speak and call the employees of individual individually they must be registered their names and their addresses and particulars okay must be sent to the interior minister for him to approve no but these people are not coming as employees but so in what no. capacity no 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 in what capacity listen you see Thank the you. law regulates That's the law no that yes. employees i'm saying yes but who, who do you call employees how in what capacity were they being trained in what capacity? Uh, Where they being trained? MPP you can't is it? You cannot just go up the street and plug people and start training. Oh, them. you are not talking about the three South Africans. No, You're not talking about South the Africa. fifteen the 50 who are going individually. Are going individually, each of them needs to be vetted mm -hmm. by the interior That's minister. That's what the law says. That's no. what the law says. No. Where? Even these South Africans, you that, see, that, that, something, something. Where, where does the law check the section? Is it the vetting? Oh, give us section. Is it the vetting? Yeah. Which section? I'll pull it out for you. Don't worry. I'm here. Some pull it. Some tell us so that we can look at it. I think it's a question of the vetting. The vetting you mentioned. Where is it? Even the training. Where is it? The Even the three months, mm. something. Mm. Bearing in mind that they were invited by organizations that cannot be called security companies. The law says they ought to be registered before they can render the service. Even private investigations. The law says you ought to be registered mm -hmm. before you can render that service. Training. Mm -hmm. So before people jump ahead of themselves to dismiss what the BNI is doing and turn themselves into law uh, courts and dismiss the case, they ought to avail themselves to the facts. The MPP story is not adding up. The BNI is involved in an investigation. They have not completed it. There's, there was also oh, another... And yet they've charged yeah. people. Oh, but why? They haven't finished the investigation. So, so when you charge somebody, doesn't mean that you finished the investigation. Oh, ah, but, but, Egbert, but, but, no, 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 no. No, Egbert, no, you are telling no, me no, that in no. this country. The moment you charge somebody, you are still holding the shit. Hold it there. Let me get to Let me get to Kweku and come to... There's one small point about whether or not charges have been dropped against some people. Um, I, I wanted us to deal okay, with fine. that uh, fine. separately. Fine. And uh, Felix earlier on was referring to the LI 1992. Yeah, I will um, dig up that section. Yes, and um, mm -hmm. the, the portion that requires that <coughs> individual members of a security, a private security entity, ought to be licensed separately uh, to be able to work with the um, particular security company, particularly Regulation 5 says employees to be licensed no organization licensed to operate under these regulations so that's why the fact that you are you are licensed to operate as a private security organization um, that no let me read that again i just no, uh, missed it said no, no organization, no organization under, under these regulations yes shall employ Plo a person, a person unless, that, unless person that person is permitted by, by the, the minister secretary to be employed by, <laughs> to, the, to be employed by the organization and the secretary is the minister uh, in here yeah. and the yes wait wait um Law. uh they are supposed to make applications and the then the applications will go to the exactly. minister and there's a form they are supposed to fill the form is provided for here they will say the addresses where they are and so on and so forth whether the security private securities do this is but another thing we'll ah. look at but later but if you don't comply yeah. that doesn't yes. mean that oh, yes yes let's hear you let's hear you yes my street appreciation of the law mm. The emphasis here is employees, yes. employment, so employees, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm. employers, mm. Huh? Mm. and the heading mm. itself, that mm. subtitle, I don't mm. know how you call yeah. it legally, right. employees to be licensed, mm -hmm. employees, mm -hmm. those people who were being trained, mm -hmm. I do not believe that the company was employing them.
training them for purposes of employment. But so let me. What capacity were they being trained? No, no, oh, no, but we have been told <laughs> that fact is out there mm -hmm. that the MPP says they had sent these persons, bodyguards, photographers, and some people in their security detail private. for purposes of being trained by this private security organization. I think we should stick to the facts. Right. We can do your own interpretation mm -hmm. and things. Okay, but if you are going this, yeah. to talk of the law, mm -hmm. it is employees for purposes of employment. That's what it is. Right. So what the employees I do don't have much. Be, so be, be careful, be careful uh, you don't do what you didn't want. Okay, yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm And then again, Dr. Enin, and he's an authority. Yes. I take a lot he's, from him. He's listening to all of yes. you. He'll come in. Yes. yes. Mm. I, I've, I've been learning from him over the years. There are times I even call him for mm -hmm. input. Mm. But interesting point. I beg to differ with some of the, the trust of some of his points. The issue of limitation of foreign involvement. Significantly, if I heard him right, he said it is not too explicit. But I'm searching. And I can't find it in the airline. I, I also cannot find it in the airline. Yes. So, so I, I so would want to be clear what he's referring to, whether he's referring to this airline or he's referring to another legislation, because he referred to three different uh, No, he talked about the act. I've yes. checked the act. But the act is mm. to do with the police service. That is correct. Proper. Mm. And then, of course, Section 38 of the act then tells you of the what should be done relative to private security organizations. Right. And it calls for the these regulations to be made. That is so. And that's why these regulations are that here. So. Uh -huh. I've searched for that. It's not because of what he said today. I've mm. been searching mm -hmm. because it's an argument out there right. that because of the foreign input is a violation of some legislative instrument. Mm. I'm yet to locate it yeah. here. He, he said with emphasis, uh, as he has been reported, that there was a clear violation of our laws, yes. our security regulations. Yes. So we'll get back I to can't him find on a foreign in that aspect. Mm. Yeah. Now, I agree with uh, Felix that any security agents anywhere who gets a hint that something might be going on that was untoward ought to be proactive and investigate. I, in principle, I'm for that. I believe in proactive security uh, posture than just waiting for the thing to happen. Mm. And yes, in not too, not too uh, just recently, we did a national general alert on terror and all these things. So the environment itself will call for a security agency to be more proactive. Fair deal. Now, when the security agency exercises that option, there are ways and means of going about it so that everybody knows that you are dealing with the issue in a very professional way and in a non-partisan manner. Mm. You see, the difficulty we have had with this particular case is this. And I'm not, a bo I'm not bothered about any possible or the likelihood of any leakage. I'm not bothered about that. As a journalist, it would be so unfair on my part. But I see a certain syndication. The first shot, in terms of the reportage, wasn't a scoop. Mm -hmm. Scoops are usually restricted to one media house who has done some investigations or something has picked up the thing. This happened in a very pervasive way. Huh? Two state-owned media, media, media institutions, that's the GBC as well as Daily Graphic, and four or five other private independent newspapers. All at the same time, the same day, put the story out there in a very virtually syndicated manner. And the worst part of it, was the misrepresentations, mercenaries, terrorists. Mm -hmm. You see, when you approach things that way, even the general alert that was good and that all of us had to wake up to, you were distorting it. You are creating problems for that general alert. Uh, the last time I checked, the way mercenaries operate is not the way these three South Africans operated. The last time I checked, mercenaries actually are sent into combat zones, really. The last time I checked, the training location is not a secret location. Felix was very clever. He said obscure. 
<laughs> it's not a skill. I'm not your choice of skill. It's not a skill. Wow. You see, the choice of words he did. But you get words from there. I'm not in any way that he's getting there. When I say it's a skill, it's far removed from science. It's not. Everybody knows that place. And training exercises go on in that place. It's a skill. Everybody knows that. So you see, we were we were activated to start discussing threats, serious threats to national security. Because if indeed we are talking mercenaries, we are talking terrorists, we are talking about secret locations where training is going on, we are talking talking of weapon handling, we're not told any weapon was retrieved. Later weapon. Now we are being told military uniforms were retrieved. And they were not we're not told this. No, <laughs> even the charge sheet. Mm -hmm. uh, look, the charges alone tell you there's a downgrading. Oh, Relative. The are misdemeanors. Uh, it's incredible. No, but the so DNA has never spoken about mercenary activity. Hey. Oh, they didn't have to. Yes, that's but that's why began, has no, 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 wait, people, wait, okay, no. Anyway, wait. That is it's why, that is that's why yes. began. Misdemeanors, misdemeanors in plain English explanation is petty crimes. Yeah, but the state uh, shows yes, yes, it not said on the Google. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. It is important they, that we clarify But that. the BNI, yes. have they been speaking? Oh, no, but we are told said that sources close to BNI, mm. highly placed mm. sources to BNI. That's what we've been told this in all the media reports. Yeah. You also have admitted that BNI doesn't speak. Yeah. They exactly. haven't spoken. Exactly. But they have not also contested anything that has been put out there relative to this matter. All we are told is that sources close to BNI, I think it was only the GBC guys, who did a story to the fair that was flashed up house mm -hmm. communications that is bureau. Right. Mm. It was false. They retracted well, it. Well, they put it out there. And they apologized to Stand Bay, but did not apologize to flashed up house communications bureau. I because, found that significant. Because it was, it was no, no, I found it significant. No, no, no. But Stand, let me clarify no, no, The I flashed up house communications bureau has not issued any Yes, so they should have apologized oh, to the flashed up house communications bureau. Or the Ministry of Communications. Listen. Yeah. That's serious matters. Or the Ministry of Communications. That has supervisory control mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. in a, should have demanded an mm -hmm. apology and retraction mm -hmm. from GBC mm -hmm. relative to that matter. Mm -hmm. But that's not mm -hmm. my well, main Well, Stan doesn't hear that uh, bureau any, more, any longer, is it? Which, yeah, yeah. which was clearly mm -hmm. an, an error there. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that what, when Stan, you, leave, you take Stan out, you have Flash Staffers Communications Bureau remaining. Right. And the Minister of uh, Communication should have demanded apology. further apology and retraction. Of that, but that there's a silence on that matter. In any case, I said that's not my major point. Mm. But you see, so here we are. We are dealing with a, a matter with consciously, and I mean those who put out that syndicated report. And look, I'm not naive. There is no way there was no BNI connection to the syndication. We've been in this game for a long time. Some of us have done some before. <laughs> So I know what I'm talking about. They you know, generated some heat and brought all sorts of discussions on the matter left, right, center to go to court and there's an anticlimax, in my view. And even the packaging, huh? I'm a street lawyer. I can tell you, you are not careful, they'll suffer a serious setback in court. This reminds me of the Rocco Frimpon incident where they went and arrested some soldiers. Yes. Kept them for over 100 days in custody without reference to the Constitution. And they, were, they told the court that they didn't know that they were also under the obligation of that law. Eventually, you saw what happened with that case. Felix right now makes a point about they, 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 they indicated they were going to sleep in Hotel A, but were found in Hotel B. What's the big deal there? That immediately made me recall the Italians, the three Italians who were busted 2000 towards the elections. One of their crimes was that they had indicated they would be staying at Novetel, but they were found at Golden Tulip. So that was a problem. Eventually, it ended nowhere. <laughs> Look, I think that the way the BNI is behaving on this matter, the court grants bail. The BNI does not respect the court order. We'll, we'll deal with that. Oh, okay, that's uh, subsequent. We'll no. deal with that. Um, so, 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 to be honest with you, okay, I, I believe we'll be dealing with also the alternative arrangement. That's right. The security for that's, the that's president. Right. Okay. That's then right. I'll, now, I'll, I'll now um, um, hello, Dr. Enin. Oh, Dr. Enin. Hello, yeah, Dr. Enin. Yes. 
there's, yeah, hello, a, yeah. there's, there's a question from uh, Kukubako, and, and I had been intending yeah. to ask you the same question. How do you respond yeah. to that when you suggest that um, the fact that these are foreigners is an issue which is a violation of our security laws? Specifically, which law are you referring to? Look, I think if you read both, and Kweku, it's been a long time. Yes, if you sir. read both, like 1571 and 1579, it is not explicit. But there is, I'm trying to find something that we did on these two allies and the concerns that were expressed much earlier on by people who did with issues relating to registration and those who could play a role um, um, in our private security companies. Mm. While the law may not be explicit, I think there is, there is, if you read them very carefully, both these two allies, I think certain concerns are raised about who can play what roles in our private security companies. There is no doubt about that, Kweku. Okay, I don't have the law in front of me, mm. but I do remember... This one that we had some conversations around this mm. and there was supposed to be a much a revision that made who could play a role much more explicit okay just just briefly that, let's quickly that. read section 11 which he wants because, to read uh, well, uh, for for your attention okay. to see whether it settles this issue uh, the, the nearest but that's it says persons not entitled uh, to mm. license or permit right the following person shall not be granted a license or a permit under these regulations. A person who has been convicted, whether in Ghana or elsewhere, right. of felony, an offense involving fraud, dishonesty, or moral turpitude, an offense in relation to arms or ammunition, or an offense in relation to narcotic drugs. B, a person who has been sentenced to a period of imprisonment, whether in Ghana or elsewhere. C, a person who has been dismissed, removed, or released on disciplinary grounds from the police service. Mm. The That's prison why in the police service, and if you have worked with any security, uh, state security organization before, in the declaration, you are supposed to declare and state why yes. you, are leave, yes. you left the, the office. That's yeah. right. Mm. And then the last one, a person in respect of whom the minister is satisfied that it is contrary to the national interest mm -hmm. or the interest of national security that the person should be granted the licenses under these regulations. Okay. These are the areas I right. see exemptions. Th these are the clear, clear limitations. But uh, Dr. Eni is saying it is not explicit. That, that, do you find some help even in this? Dr. Eni, that, that's to you. No, I, I think what this law or what Kweku has read is that it gives a space within which whoever is responsible for authorizing the activities of these groups can interpret the law in the wider interest of the country. And I think it's important... No, there are, there are specifics us. first. Uh, convicts on uh, matters of dishonesty and all of that. The clear uh, issues. The only aspect is the last bit, which gives the minister the discretion in the national interest to disallow uh, registration. Okay, yeah. let me add this. Section yes, 16, I mean, if we, we, I mean, we if permit. You, Okay. He, he wants to ask Section 16 Let's before you see, come in. Can help yeah, us. Section 16. So Revocation please hear him. of licenses says that the minister may revoke or suspend the license granted under Regulation 1 if the ownership or control of or any controlling interest in the organization to which the license, license relates has passed to a person who is unsuitable to be considered for the grant of the license. Hmm. Or B, the organization to which the license relates contravenes a provision of these regulations. Okay. I still don't get Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, let's hear you, uh, Dr. Enin. Yes, yeah, so I think from what Kweku has read, it creates or it gives an opportunity to the minister or to whoever is, is part of the licensing regime to interpret a, the activities or the backgrounds of those who have been brought in as either detrimental to the broader national interest. That's right. So that's not the that, foreign. That's the and therefore there. should not be given a license or the permission to work. Mm -hmm. but not now, part of the challenge that we face with the two allies and at 350 is that there are so many fuzzy areas that does not or, or, or that gives probably the possibility for a loose interpretation. Okay, so what has happened now, 
we were quiet that we take a couple of steps back, post this hula balloon, and then to say, how can we be sure that the regulations are very clear? So there's no uh, mis mis misunderstanding at all. Okay. And, if, okay. and if, if you look at the number of private security companies in Ghana, probably less than a third of them are registered with the Ministry of Interior. Mm. And those who are registered with the Ministry of Interior had hardly paid the dues that they are supposed to pay. Not only that, mm. if you also look at the membership of the Association of Private Security Organizations in Ghana, mm. which is, of course, a, a voluntary organization, probably less than a third of all private security companies in Ghana are also uh, registered with, with the APSOG. Mm. So what we are seeing is that precisely because the oversight and implementation of the regulations around private security has been horribly weak, okay, it's easy for quite a number of these companies to flout the rules. The capacity of the Ministry of Interior to play this oversight function over a very long time has been extremely weak. And I think the ministry itself okay. recognizes this. All right, so... so, so moving forward... Mm, mm. Uh, um, uh, we'll come to you, we'll deal with because that's, that's another aspect of the discussion uh, where some people are even referring to the constitution and suggesting that there is a parallel, you know, police uh, organization or military security organization that is being formed contrary to uh, the provisions of the constitution like uh, Article 200, which says, for example, that you cannot set up a, a police service unless uh, with permission from authorization of parliament. And mm. you were earlier quoted to have given an interview in which you said, among other things, that uh, for quotes, you are quoted as saying, when you form your own security group and you win power, how do you de uh, de demobilize, demobilize them? Or do you automatically absorb them into formal security structures? And you are also quoted yeah. as saying that you have read all the security laws in this country and bringing the three South Africans in to do what they are doing is wrong and has to be admitted. So we'll come and deal with that shortly now. Um, I, I, I'm being called upon to take a break before I come to you so that you, we hear from you and continue with this discussion. Uh, we'll take a break here. We'll be right back and to hear from Dr. Bosman Asari. Uh, he has uh, a lot of you know, political perspective uh, from where he, he, he sits. We'll be right back. You're welcome back. This is News File. It's your most authoritative news analysis show. It's brought to you by Bank of Africa, strong as a group and close as a partner. MTN, welcome to the new world and star assurance, creating smiles since 1985. Now, let's hear Dr. Boss Monasari on this issue of the arrest of the three South Africans who were in the country or in the country, who are in the country to provide security training, private security training for uh, the NPP. What do you say about the developments? Well, I think in the first instance, I'll concede that uh, living in a very dangerous world, especially with developments in uh, Mali, Ivory Coast, Burkina Faso, once someone picks a signal, and this is an intelligent agency like uh, the BNI, once they pick a signal that you have some foreigners from other countries who are training some Ghanaians in certain capacities, uh, this will really raise an alarm, uh, which the BNI must be commended for that. But looking at the bigger picture, developments after this arrest have not really helped to enhance the image of the BNI as an institution. I remember one of the new first news items I saw on this particular issue, the, the headline was terror alert, three South Africans arrested. And I read the news and I noticed that no, this headline has nothing to do with terrorism or anything which threatens the security of Ghana. And when you are being very frank and objective to the Ghanaian people, once you are saying something is threatening national security, then this is really a big issue. This is something that many Ghanaians are really going to be worried, uh, if not concerned. So the question is, is this an issue that we should consider within the light of threatening national security? And we also expect an institution like the BNI to be so, so professional in the way they do their things. How did such an issue really it got to the media within the shortest possible time and this raises a lot of uh, fear and panic. And when you are not being very careful, one of the challenges is that people will be viewing the BNI as uh, being very, very political, partisan in the way they do That's their the things. Uh, and let's be very clear, in, this is a country where we are running a majoritarian political system where we have two individuals from 
uh, party A and party B, the MPP and the NDC. So anytime an institution like the BNI, which is expected to be so professional, and I've had classes with people who are workers of the BNI, very, very intelligent individuals. So I was like, ah, how come the BNI all of a sudden exploded an issue like that? Because this is supposed to be an intelligence agency, the best we have in this country. So I expect a lot of professionalism from this particular agency. And even beyond that, we, we based on what we've heard, the people were coming into this country on business purposes. Now the world has become so expanded. We live in the global uh, village and business can be very several. And as far as I'm concerned, when you are doing security consulting, it's considered a trade in services, a business in service, which is allowed internationally. So I think the intelligence agency must be very, very careful the way they deal with these issues. And to end, I will say that one major problem we have in this country is uh, we need our parliament to be very, very assertive. Because the problem we are having is that because the executive branch of government also controls the parliament, it's like literally our MPs on issues like this, where we expect them to come up openly to even, if possible, the BNI directors, those who are in charge of certain operations like this. Because the point is that once you are raising that this issue is threatening national security, you are, it's, it's fear and panic. The Ghanaian people are going to be worried about it. So let's make sure that the political authorities are really doing their work very well. And in this instance, the parliament. And I expect a lot of parliament. And to end, I will say we also have some diplomatic issues involved. These are South African nationals. So we had uh, the uh, BNI has done the investigation, etc. They came up with the charge sheet, and although we are yet to go into it, the BNI must ensure that these people are treated with the necessary respect. All the recognitions must be taken into consideration. Well, we are not very careful as a country. We end up creating some problems between us and South Africa, which will not augur well for our movement as a country. Interesting there, uh, some comments that you have sent in, but uh, let's listen to Freddie Blay, who is the acting national chairman of the New Patriotic Party. He held a press conference and had a few things to say, including that there's a deliberate attempt to expose uh, Nanado uh, to, you know, uh, some security lapses, so to speak. The posture of the state authorities on this matter has led us with no choice. We have every reason to believe that the lives of our presidential candidate and his running mate are deliberately being exposed to high risk by the Mahama government. We will go as far as to say that the president and his government, with his government, is deliberately allowing the life of his main competitor, contestant, for the 2016 presidential race to be endangered. It's important we disclose to the general public that the NPP have been receiving intelligence reports over a period of time. That some people allegedly sympathetic to the government were planning to harm our presidential candidate, Akufuadu, and his running mate, Dr. Baumia, and blame it falsely on an internal MPP on MPP attack. We had no reason to doubt the authenticity of the intelligence, though we did not wish to sound any alarm on this. Nevertheless, we decided not to sit idle but to take steps to enhance the security protection around the two candidates and their spouses. Some local security experts were accordingly contracted to assist as training the personnel guards who offer close protection to our political leaders. As part of this exercise, the party decided to use the services of some of the best people, the business of VIP protection in the world. These men who have been detained have an enviable record of protecting heads of state 
in South Africa, especially at the difficult period of the transition from apartheid to democracy. You're welcome back. And um, some comments were uh, brought in. Kwame Buedu uh, in Kent, in the U UK, says that uh, those being trained could have been sent outside of Ghana. Those being trained, that's what you wanted to say, could have been sent outside of Ghana to attain whatever level of security training. But the NPP did the opposite. And so why the brouhaha? And you say, we, can't, we didn't even spend as much time discussing the worrisome arrival of the Gitmo uh, terrorists uh, into Ghana. Kofi Sika says, this issue brings back memory, bring back, back to memory uh, what happened to Albert Odinga in 2001 and 2002. The same NPP who are crying foul detained the guy for so long on suspicion of endangering national peace and security. Today, they are singing a different song. NPP can't continue to de defend and provide flimsy justification for this diabolic act of theirs. It is not interesting. Is it not interesting that the National Peace Council, Catholic Bishops Conference, Christian Council, Occupy Ghana, etc., are quiet since this issue broke out? Ibrahim Kopa says the behavior of the BNI under the NDC government clearly vindicates the long-held perception that the word, quote, democracy is alien to the NDC government. The modus operandi of the BNI is synonymous to a totalitarian government. In fact, not even a military government will behave like this. Sofo Yamuza says the brouhaha regarding South African uh, ex-police officers and their subsequent disregard to the ruling of the competent court of jurisdiction is mind-boggling. The ruling party and state institutions on one hand and the opposition on the other, on the other hand, didn't handle matters well. I, however, hope and pray that the government will put on hold the continuous intimidation. Um, Washington, Wasa, Wantram. Don't our security agencies seek expert advice from foreign security agencies? A case in point is the collapse of the Malcolm building in 2012. Didn't we import Israeli experts and their sniffer dogs? The BNI should concentrate on stopping marauding Chinese galamseers who carry sophisticated weapons mining illegally in our forest and river bodies. Uh, Musa in Kumasi says, can this happen in France or any other developed country? Smuggling mercenaries to uh, train security guards and government is not aware. Kofi Boating, KNUSD, says, in the peak of the rampant fire outbreaks, didn't the government bring experts from the U.S. to help us resolve the market fire menace? What has then uh, happened to the Ghana National Fire Service? These people in government are making a mockery of themselves. Benjamin in London says the NDC government should stop embarrassing the state with the Mickey Mouse games of the BNI. The country is in a mess with mass unemployment and poor economic growth. Um, okay, Kofi Sika, you again, I'll take this, uh, but this should be your last on that issue. You say that not long ago, heavy ammunition were impounded in Kumasi and the Volta region. Uh, we have every right to link the two. Again, NPP and its cohorts were vehemently opposed to the communications, uh, okay, the spy law, you mean. What were their fears? They know what they were planning. We leave them in the hands of God, who is the best judge. Well, uh, as Koku uh, Baku raised, the question of the BNI taking information and quickly you know, putting it out within some circles of the media raises all questions of trust with the, with the security operatives. And that should also tell you why some people have, have problems with uh, security agencies being allowed to 
intercept your communication without recourse to a court. Um, now, Egbert, starting with you again, uh, it's being, this discussion is being elevated to the question properly of how the state doesn't seem to pay attention to providing security for persons, high risk, yeah. like uh, flag bearers and so on. It is, it is very true and it is a shame. But before I speak to that issue, I think that uh, Dr. Eni, mm -hmm. I've listened to him. Um, I'm a bit surprised. I'm a bit surprised. He's somebody I respect. He's somebody um, who's, who's, if you like, standing in the security or even national affairs you cannot disregard. Mm. And so sitting here today and listening to him, I sincerely think that, you know, when this matter broke, he, he gave an interview which I think was an outburst. All kinds of things he said. And then if I consider what he's saying here today, I sincerely think that there are two different things that he's saying. Now Dr. Eni seems to suggest that there's a lacuna in the law no. so that we should do it. If, you, if there's a lacuna in the law, then why do you take one part of it that maybe you understand and go to town with it as if everyone else, you know, doesn't know what they are talking about? I, I, I sincerely think He's that... He's being quoted profusely, particularly by sympathizers of the, of the ruling party. Yes. Um, as having said, he has combed all the security laws of this country. Oh, please. And he doesn't see a justification for the NPP bringing in these guys. Um, now, as, it's, as it were, it was a question of they being foreign. Mm -hmm. And he says that... He's making it clear that there's no any specific provision. Yes. So he's explaining what so he said earlier. So then, okay, he's explaining. So that was it a wrong impression, or was he misquoted, or that he himself spoke that position? No, no, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not going there to raise any hackles. All I'm saying is that let us, you know, stick to what ought to be or what is, and not what ought to be. You understand? So that people, because, 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 listen. I mean, I understand you, but move on. Well. Well, since, since, since you have, because you see, things about, in fact, at a point, I thought that Bob Dina, you know Bob Dina, this mercenary French soldier who <laughs> did about three coups in the Comoros, who is now of blessed memory. I, I thought that he had come into Ghana. You understand? <laughs> we have moved on. No, 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 no. You see, so, 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 Samson, let us, let us, when matters come up, be very patient and be fed with the proper information before, before we get into the public space to, to, you know, to speak about, about matters that, that we do not know. My, my friend, my friend uh, uh, Felix to my, to my right, for example, says that, yes, when they went to Agne Aqua, the El Capitano Hotel, they saw military uniforms. As far as I know, as far as I know, it is not an offense to be found in possession of a military uniform. <laughs> it is used. Use of it. There's a decree. There's, a, there's an NRC decree that says that. Otherwise, there's uh, so many people walking around in Ghana, some of them in uh, 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 camouflage shorts, camouflage tops, and all the rest. All those people ought to be arrested. You see, these are things that raise unnecessary tension in a republic during an election year. We, we talk about sandbags. Look, when there are flats in Accra, I see people. Improvise using sandbags to do that. Something every day people train. Every day, look. The other day I went to. Um, um, no, uh, I think that you are suggesting that you are completely unconcerned about military uniforms found with Samson. the people, as we are told. If that is true, Samson, you, you, you don't think it's an issue I'm at all. I'm a Ghanaian. I believe in Ghana, and I believe in a secure, peaceful Ghana because. When Ghana is at peace with itself and the citizenry is safe, I am also safe. Why would you keep one if you don't intend to use it? Something. You know, you know the things people use military uniforms for? You see, how many, for example, Kwachu Futsu has just sat and, and spewed out the fact that military uniforms were found. He should help us. How many military uniforms? They were training 15 were persons. They were 30. They were approximately, uh -huh. Yes. Okay, that is according to you. Yeah. I'm also suggesting to you that it is not true. That. That no military uniforms, <laughs> that, that military uniforms were found. No, 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 no. no. Don't, you see, you, you, yes, yes. yes. You see, these things, these things are concerns. serious, <laughs> and that when we come and sit on radio or TV and say so, that I, military uniforms were found. I think before we even go to the issue of the larger uh, protection by the yes. state for the flag bearers, yes. we, we, we should deal with the BNI's 
the, the issue of the court. Yes. And what has uh, happened Samson, after that? Yes. What happened in court that day? You arraign three people before a court. Mm. A court admits them to bail. I think 20,000 Ghana CD each. Right. CDs each. And then one surety. No justification. The court, the judge, before she rose, makes a direct order that those, based on, based on submissions by counsel for the accused, mm. that they should be taken straight to the registrar so that the bill formalities should be done. The procedure is that when a court, you, when you arrest somebody or a group of persons um, as security agents, to the point where you bring them to court, they are your property. The day you take them to court, arraign them, mm. they become court property. So the courts whose property they had become, then says, take them to the registry for the necessary papers to be signed. The BNI did not take them to the registry. Whisk them away. You understand? So even though there, was, uh, there were people ready to, 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 to stand surety, that could not be done. You understand? And I think that the BNI and its officials, the investigator who brought them to court, and the prosecutor who spoke, read the charges in court, they are liable for contempt. If there's a human rights component, and there's a contempt component, all those things will be brought down very hard on them. Because it's a, this is the same BNI during the Atamil's era that went about seizing people's passports. And we had to go to court, and the court ordered that, look, passports, you cannot do, deal with them that way. Allow also, when you arrest people, allow their, what do you call them, their counsel to have access to them. In this instance, I know for a fact that, yes, counsel had access to them on at least one or two occasions before they went to court. But what is it? Right now, as we speak, if these guys die in custody today, Ghana is in trouble. The director of BNI is in trouble because you are keeping the people illegally. It is not that the bill conditions, you went to the registrar and the registrar or the accused person failed to meet the bill conditions for which by operation of administrative procedure, you uh, will keep you till then. But what the BNI has done is that it has usurped the hallowed glory of the courts to, to let them go away on bail and said, well, even though the court has said that it has admitted you to bail, we, as far as we are concerned, we are guests. And they did it because uh -huh. they know that today, today, I mean, Friday, Friday yesterday was a holiday. Today is a holiday. Sunday is a holiday. Man, mm -hmm. I'm sending a clear appeal to President Mahama and Vice President Quincy Bekwe Misata that this nation is a nation of laws and not a nation of the BNI and what it thinks. So that if President Mahama is committed to the rule of law, he should verify what I'm saying, that if this is what took place in court, and this is indeed what took place in court, he should order the BNI to release the people according to the bail terms that were on. That way, I will see that his government is coming. When, recently, when there were xenophobic attacks in South Africa, a high commissioner, Mr. Hoy, he was all over the place, calling into Ghana and assuring people, you think that the South Africans, they will also not be concerned about this? Interesting, but uh, hold on. Uh, Our Felix, president Felix, was a doctor what, what of do laws you know? from, from Aberdeen what do you, University. What do you he should know? act it. Yeah. What this do you, is law. What do, you know, what do you know to be the reason the BNI is not respecting the court's order? Well, this is motive. No claim from Egbert. Oh, I mean, it, it is intended to achieve a purpose. The oh. fact is, everybody who knows my history, at least on this program, knows that I'm a stickler for due process. I have always insisted that people's rights should be respected, even those accused of the most appalling crimes. So I'll be the last person to endorse any action that violates anybody's law. The BNI also knows that. They are constrained in this instance to hold these gentlemen for reasons that will become apparent in due course. Fortunately, Oh, quick, let me land this. Fortunately, fortunately, there's a court process that is currently ongoing. Mm. The lawyers of the <laughs> accused persons have every opportunity to use that process to preserve the interests and rights of their persons. Let me also add that there was some claim on Thursday, I believe, that charges against Captain, Captain Skoda and, and Aqua retired had been dropped. Now, they, did not, they were not taken to court. As I speak to you, in fact, Captain Koda is in BNI custody. At least as of the time that I was coming here. I don't know whether there has been any further development since I've been here. Because which, of which, which would mean he, he would have been in custody for how long now? He, he was picked up on Friday. That was yesterday. So uh, Saturday so and Sunday is not part of no, the 48 No, but today is not Sunday. Mm. Today is Saturday. No, I'm saying Saturday and Sunday are when not Saturday part of the 48 No, hours. And, and he's been held in law for custody. Mm. That is it. You also know that the BNI went to the Dankwa Institute. They did not 
vandalize the place, as mm -hmm. it's being claimed. They went there based on information that I've already they indicated. They vandalized the place. They invited two mm. of the persons involved. Again, you see, we have seen photographs of, uh, you know, the offices having been no, started. Samson, if you know the MPB carefully, you know that there's not something that they cannot do. Oh, Samson, you see, Samson, so, you see, But the BNI, Samson. listen, wait, the BNI position, is, uh, uh, Samson, the BNI wait, position yeah. is clear yeah. mm. that they did not do what the MPB is accusing them of doing. Mm. End of story. Their, the their, other point... Their, their, their side of the story is that they went there to the DI's office. That's the Dankwa Institute yes. office. Mm -hmm. When they got there, they met only the security watchman, person, yeah. the security uh, per, per person. Mm -hmm. The security person decided to run into some hiding and told them that <laughs> there was nobody around. Mm -hmm. And then they decided to leave. Yeah, that's Do you that's believe that, that story? Wh why should you not believe the story? No, why should we tell that to the Marines. No, but, but the MPP too should tell it to mm -hmm. the Marines. That the BNI went and overturned their office. What is it? Have you had the opportunity you see, you see, occasion to deal with the BNI before yourself? Why? I'm aware that another I'm only MPP. asking. I'm only aware asking. that yeah. another MPP. Mm -hmm. They used to arrest people for whispering into people's ears. They used well, to chase people to church. No, I'm, I'm, I'm asking mm -hmm. you. He was kept in BNI custody for more than 40 Sorry, sorry, but the BNI, the BNI, sorry, mm, the BNI question. went to um, Professor Mills' house mm -hmm. mm, and harassed his wife in the name of pursuing some cars. Mm -hmm. So the BNI has a long history. So with that, with that history, with that history, you see, with that history, who would you believe? Some, who who would you believe? Would you the believe MP the MPP uh, guys at the DI office or you believe the BNI? Something. Uh, me, I am eternally suspicious of anything the MPP says. Mm. I have a right to take that position. This is the same party that is claiming that the president that I serve and the government that people are affiliated with okay. are trying to kill their family. The court, so so but let me, let me to that part. Now, uh. syndication. I'm even surprised that Kweku is raising that point. It will not be the first time in this country that papers have syndicated stories. Kweku is here. Egbert used to be at the, what's the name of the paper? The, the Ghana Observer. Yes. Before then, I think it was the Independent. independent. Yeah. And they have syndicated stories together with the <laughs> Daily Guide and the Daily Graphic and the Ghanaian Times. Okay? <laughs> Again, you see, I'm not no the public official. The way, the way see, sometimes there are slight Samson, differences Samson, in, the, Samson, Samson. in the content of newspapers, the stories. Newspapers the have liberty mm, mm. to put a spin on the stories they publish. They can publish the facts <laughs> and interpret them. If anybody feels libeled, mm. they can take action. All right. But I'm saying that people who have in the past done this, Cannot now come and sit in okay. judgment of Thank you. In any event, Joy FM, have you not taken possession of draft or these the reports? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you <coughs> one manner of things. Even when those accused are disputed, the first containing. So I don't think that the syndication bit for okay, me is, is a major issue. Thank you. Thank so you. let us put the issues. Thank, thank you. you. Let's, hear, let's hear one of the lawyers. <laughs> one of the lawyers for the three accused persons, uh, Atachia, Samuel Atachia, uh, who is also uh, MP representing the NPP. Let's it's, it's in bad taste because, you see, we are disrespecting the laws of Ghana. And these are foreigners. Don't give any impression that this is a kangaroo, I mean, I'm mean a country. It would they treat people anyhow. How can a court of competent jurisdiction say that take the accused uh, persons to the registrar and then go and look at the houses of the sureties so that bail is granted? And then you just wax them away, defying the order of the court, and you are sending them back to BNI. What kind of arrangement is this? What do you intend to do about this? Well, it's going to carry far-reaching consequences for them. If they do not I mean, I mean, go through the bail processes today and they are detained, and we are in the, almost in a, a holiday, it will have serious implications. We are not going to joke with this matter. You think it was deliberate? If, uh, probably so. He was challenging me. He was challenging me that I was going to take them. In the face of what the judge said, that now release them to the registrar as you go and look at the houses of the uh, um, sureties. But he has explained that this is a process you have to go through. What to process? There's no process like that. I'm telling you that so when you come to court. To get your house if he doesn't actually get a two men going. How? Do you need a man to know my house, the surety? It doesn't accord with common sense. He's saying that we should go and look at the houses of the uh, sureties. Whilst the accused persons are with the registrar, and you can detail your security personnel to be at the registrar's office. And when you look at the houses of the registrar, that's the end. So what are they trying to do? Today is Thursday. You suspect they want to keep him right through. It is, it is very clear, but it will have grave consequences for them. I'm telling you. We are not going to lie low for them to treat us anyhow. But you look helpless in this situation. Oh, what can we do? We will not start any fight with them, but we'll use the law to bring them to order. Seriously so. That a court of law granted individuals bail, and they were whisked away to the BNI. For what? You are curtailing their liberty. Immediately you come to court, you have surrounded the, the security of the individuals to the court. You do not have control over them again. When somebody is admitted to bail, his whole fate is with the court and not the investigator. So why do you take them back? 
This is not law. Well, we're going to see what the registrar will say. Samuel Atachia is uh, one of the lawyers for the three, and uh, he was speaking to journalists right after uh, the court processes. Uh, could briefly on yeah, the outcome yeah. of the court. Yeah, but in making my case about syndication, mm -hmm. I remember I even said we've done all these things yes. before. Yes. So, <laughs> no, 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 let me make, no, please. Please, I was talking yes. of the misrepresentations and distortions that came out of this particular syndication mm. that created a certain yes. frightening situation Bob of mercenaries, yeah. terrorists. Yeah, so that oh, is what the emphasis yeah. was so on. All right. Now, thank Felix. you. Thank you, Felix. Felix. Yes. Okay. So yeah, it's great. I don't yeah. want to be misrepresented. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's good that you've clarified your position. Yes. It helps. And yeah. two, uh, the church matter, it was yes. police CID, Friends. not BNI. Yeah. Right. And you see, but this BNI... BNI in the, no, the, the, um, in the Professor Mills' house. house. Yes, and UT Yes, that's, yes. yes. that's a fact. Yeah. Uh, the DI thing, now we are told that the BNI indeed went there. Mm -hmm. And that they went there because they have evidence to the effect that DI invited one of the guys. Two. That's not true. The DI had invited one of the guys before, before this incident, okay. what, like uh, Harris okay. or so, I think some time ago. Mm. It's true. They may have found some documentation to that. Look, I'm beginning to be clear in my mind that they did, in fact, go into the place to retrieve well, documents. They, they should tell that story about not no, having that. You, have to, you don't, you don't believe them, right? No, you I don't have to show clearly that that's See, what happened. They, they, they do sorry, this thing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Felix, 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 I'm sorry that I have to do this. But the MPP lies with Felix, Felix, please, 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 they kept them for over 100 days and claimed in court that they didn't know that that law applied to them. And there was no punishment, no sanction. It's a vote for impunity. And it didn't start with this government, I'll be honest. It's been going like he's referring to. Mm. So we are living in this system and we are allowing a state security agency to continue doing that. Mm. Today you are in government so you think it's fair. Or maybe you support government, so you think it's okay. No, I'm well, not, not you, yes. please. I'm not personalizing. Okay. I'm, I'm actually doing a general statement, and it goes for all of us. It's about time the judicial system cures that mischief through legal uh, interventions mm. by lawyers of those clients. We mm. must do something about it. Now, see, let me tell you something. Uh, maybe you have, we haven't reached there yet, but let <laughs> me t let me make a, a quick point. What is the status of the case that happened in the MPP headquarters? Yeah. There's, there's a certain link. See, as we sit here, ammunition, including an A4, A4 was yeah. supposed to have been retrieved. A sack of uh, whatever. There was allegation that the people who came in the first time were police people, denied. Those who came second were police. What is the status of that thing? So we are talking confidence, trust in these institutions. Here we are with a raid at a DI office, a raid at Kodesh office. All these people clearly from even what uh, Felix has said. The, the explanation, the explanation that the explanation yeah, yeah, according, to, according to the graphic online publication mm -hmm. sourced to the BNI mm -hmm. is that Kodesh house was not I mean, raided was equally. I, I don't even they want to believe that. them. They said <laughs> that. The business, what was it uh, Felix, Felix, please. Because the MPP says so. Felix, Felix. No, no, no. <laughs> please, please, please. Yes. I'm not defending them, but gentlemen, 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 look, 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 look. So, I'm sure so. you know the yeah. caliber of people who listen to this sure. show and watch uh, this show. We apologize. They deserve that. Sorry. apologize. Okay. So they say that they abandoned the mission at the MPP headquarters, uh, the DI's office, because the watchman said uh, mm -hmm. the, the, nobody was there. And then they led Koda to his house. Now, going to his house, he said he had keys at Nanado's office or in his car, which was sitting at Nanado's house. So they drove to the Nima police station and rather even decided not to go to that place. They waited for uh, someone to go to the Nanado's place to bring the keys. They took the keys and went straight to his house. And he actually asked for a third party independent to observe the search. 
and the search was conducted. Yeah, so they so did it a was search. Not, there was not a yes, raid. Okay. Yeah. I will give them the benefit of the doubt on the Koda angle. Mm. The DI angle, I'm not prepared to believe their story. Yeah. See, we have been told that they had evidence for them that the DI had invited. What, so what did they go there to do? They had an intention. The invitation yeah. triggered, the, the perceived invitation would trigger a security operative or an investigator mm. to look for evidence, to back it. Mm -hmm. And that evidence could easily be within the confines of DI, in their office. So it makes sense, except that they didn't do it the right way. That's all. So indeed, I find it's very significant that we have been told that they, they are thinking that DI invited one or two of those guys. That is why they went there. Mm -hmm. And that is why they went and searched. Mm -hmm. If you don't like the word read, fine. I've it deleted it. But they did not. I've it, deleted it. it they but it's that not one must go on the record. I won't buy it. Okay. Okay. I don't okay. buy it. Okay, now let's see. This, this was supposed to be quick, quick ones, yeah, and then we'll move on to the last leg of the discussion. Yes, and Dr. Nee is also on the line. Yes, so Dr. Sari. I am following the ruling of the court yesterday and the actions of the BN. On Thursday. Yeah, on Thursday, I think many many political watchers will argue that uh, the BNI is becoming a law unto a law unto itself. Because critically, the court is supposed to be one of the main branches of government. So once a judge comes up with the ruling that this is what must be done, then all of a sudden the BNI wakes the suspects away. It doesn't send a good signal, especially when the people involved are foreigners. Their countries will also be watching and they will be looking at mm. the Ghana in, legacy. In South Africa, there's a report where uh, it does appear that the media in there are seeking and asking the South African authorities Authority. whether yeah. they, they, yeah. they shouldn't intervene. Yeah. And they, they seem to suggest that they will not intervene at this point mm. yet. Because and that, that the, the embassy the here, the, <laughs> yeah, the high commission here will it's take under. care of what is And when happening. you look, I think the bigger picture is that it's very, very embarrassing because Ghana is a country that has made a lot of progress when it comes to the rule of law. Mm. And this, uh, the ruling wasn't that the people were even living the country. They will still be in the country. Mm. So additional investigations the could fact, be... In fact, their passports would have been seized. See, so, so I think that uh, that must be looked at it. Okay. And uh, even beyond that, we also have a problem of repeated mistakes on the part of the intelligence agency, which we must avoid. So I think that the president must ensure that once you are the one in charge, can you create a professional intelligence agency so that it doesn't matter which party is in power. Because currently we have a situation whereby once you are in power, then you like the actions of the BNI. Mm -hmm. Once you are not there. And, and, so that means that we, we are creating a problem for us. all of you are calling on the president. Yeah. Uh, the, the man in charge of the BNI is a lawyer. Uh, my, myself, myself and Egbert, for example, we have had clients at the BNI and we have had to go there. And sometimes you go there and you, you, you ask yourself, is that, is that my colleague lawyer? lawyer and is that, is, that, is that his reading of the law? Mm -hmm. I'm you know, sure that you sometimes also, it, it can be, it can be some way. Yes, 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 I've uh, just seen something here. Mm. The list of uh, items that were brought. Right. Check item seven. Sandbags, mm -hmm. 30 sandbags. Okay, he spoke about sandbags. No, yes. but, but uh, it was a sieve. Yeah, yeah, that was. was no, but this was, were clear. Yes, but I also told you. You know, get that the point. Concealed, yeah. See, yeah, this, this was they were not okay. concealed. Let me speak to you. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I thought you were going to Sorry, sorry. So you confirmed. Hold on, guys. 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 Hold on,
that actually under Act 526, even for all our intelligence agencies to behave in particular ways, to search somebody's house, to invite that person for a conversation, that person or the intelligence agency involved must work within the remit of the law. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, by frisking away these three individuals, it basically sends an, you know, a very false impression out there to the wider world that intelligence agencies are over and above the law and can discard uh, the law. That is very unfortunate. The, the, first, concern, yeah. the first concern is that they kept them beyond the 48 hours yeah. that uh, is uh, granted, allowed by law. But yes, this is so not new I mean, with this. And, and this is not new with the BNI. Mm -hmm. They keep people for longer than that. Um, they keep yeah. people for weeks without even recourse to their lawyers. Yeah, and that is the weakness of the oversight institution. That is Parliament, and more specifically, the Parliamentary Committee on Defense and Interior. But if you also look at Act 526 of 1996, there, there should be a substantive minister for security who appears before Parliament. Okay? Now, the lacuna here is that the National Security Coordinator um, is not enjoined by that law um, to appear before Parliament. That is if I'm reading it, that is if I'm reading it correctly. Mm. But Parliament, and particularly the Interior and Defense Committee, must have the ability or does have the powers, because it has the powers of an appeal court, to say, no, 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 this kind of behavior is not acceptable. But unfortunately, under almost every type of regime, mm. The BNI stroke, other intelligence, quasi-intelligence agencies, have basically been given, you know, uh, a free range. Mm. But there's something else that I want to say that, that I think is key. The, what, 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 hold on that briefly. There are those yes. who raise the argument that in America, for example, by the Patriots Act more particularly, the, yes. the security intelligence agencies are able to arrest people and keep them for, for beyond the allowable, allowable period when... <laughs> they are supposed to take them to court. Yes. Well, I mean, you see, when states are under threat, or when there's a certain perception that there's a need for, or there's an existential threat to the state, and therefore we need extreme measures to be able to respond to that threat, then there's a securitizing set of actions, mm. both in terms of the rhetoric, but in terms of the behavior of the security actors mm. that look there's an existential threat and therefore we need extraordinary measures that goes beyond the usual remit of the law so should ghana we also pass a law ghana. should ghana also pass a law that allows uh, national security the bni to arrest people uh not to give them access to their lawyers okay. immediately and to be able to keep them for beyond 48 hours when I we went think, to the i don't think we have been there yet we, we haven't reached average. there yet. When we went to the Constitutional we Review Commission, <laughs> when we went to the Constitutional Review Commission, we sought to reduce yes. the 48 hours to uh, yes. 24 hours, and that was yes. shut down by the by the, commi the by the commission. But you'd also notice that post that, nothing much has happened. You see, it's important that we don't give excessive powers to the Intelligence and Security Committees mm. or agencies, particularly when their oversight institutions are not as effective as we would wish. Okay. Now, okay, precisely because part of the challenge here is not so much that Ghanaians are unwilling to be protected. What the insecurity is about is about the methodologies that are being used to protect us. Okay. Who is using the law and in what manner? How long will the information that is you know, gather, be used, and how will it be used? So these are concerns that I think we need to be careful about. There's an aspect because, you wanted to speak about. Yes. Mm. I mean, two things very uh, uh, quickly. Um, I think Egbert made a good point about some of the comments I've been making. Mm -hmm. Egbert, as far back as 2008, I had made submissions to the Ministry of Interior on four documents. A a revision of LI 1571 and 1579, and then discussing a regulatory authority, codes of ethics and codes of conduct, in which part of those submissions that 
the indications were that they would be included in, in the revision of the law included, among other things, the role of foreign actors, both in terms of actively engaging in the business, mm. but also being brought in to perform certain services and how those activities could be regulated. You know, so part of my oversight was that I, I thought that this had been done. <laughs> Secondly, is Mr. Blaise's assertion that these three characters have played a role in protecting precedent in the transition from apartheid. Now, the transition started around 1990, and then Mr. Mandela became president in 1994. Now, that makes it between, you know, 22 to 26 years. Now, if you take the 39-year-old man in 1990, that makes him 13 years. If you take the 54-year-old man, that makes him 22 years. Okay, so, and then the 45-year-old man, that makes him 19 years. So, where is the experience that we are talking about? Okay, this is not just about saying that they are not experienced. They may have some experience, but in mm. providing explanations for the specific skill sets mm. um, that these three individuals have, I, I think either we've got their ages wrong, but if the ages that we've been told are true, um, then I think it raises concerns about where they were in the immediate transition mm. from uh, apartheid. Okay, uh, my understanding is that it's only one of them who has had uh, the experience that uh, is being referred to. It's only one, okay, not, right. not more than one of them. So w what should be the approach of our state in providing security for uh, high-risk persons like uh, presidential candidates and their vice presidential candidates? If you look at the 19 instruments dealing with terrorism, counter-terrorism, but particularly politically exposed persons, it makes it clear that in every country they are individuals and they may not necessarily even have to be politicians. Mm. The governor of the Bank of Ghana and other people must be provided some protection by the state precisely because the kinds of things that they do and the interventions that they make naturally provide enemies for them. But it's not just about making a law that says we need to provide security and protection. The real issue is about trust in the institution <laughs> that must deliver the service. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the panelists, I don't remember who, made a point about Nanado has been a flag bearer for two years. Okay, has there been any effort by the Ghana Police mm -hmm. Service to offer him protection? Mm -hmm. The day Nanado became um, a presidential candidate for his party, an hour or so after that, yeah. there ought to have been a formal you know, contact to say, how do we best protect you? Okay. And, and, so who, and, who, and who takes that initiative? You mean the police or the security? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean the police or national security. I mean, this must be, there must be an, autom an automation here. Mm. You see, precisely because these are individuals who are crucial to the stability and the functioning of our country, it is in our collective interest to provide them world-class protection themselves, their families, their chief staff. The police suggest okay. that they have, they have, they have uh, you know, commenced some of these discussions, but the question of trust, which you raise, because some have suggested, for example, that uh, you send an officer there to, officers to Nana, and they try to plant some cameras or try to uh, intercept some communication and send it elsewhere for uh, some mischievous yeah. use. Yes, but you see, and that is why I've asked or pleaded for a conversation between the security agencies and then uh, critical political actors. Right. If you flout the rules governing the protection of Nanado or any other high-profile person, you should be sad. Because, because it's a close protection unit, mm. you will listen to his conversations, you will see him eating or his food being brought in. You have access to his water. And occasionally, you didn't have access if he, there's an oversight of sensitive documents. Your role is not to hear or to see anything that you are not. not so, so, obviously, the question of trust, the question of trust gives rise to why these individuals would prefer training their own private security. But you see, it goes beyond the training of private security. 
as a 60-year-old state or 59-year-old state, we ought to have moved on. And I think we've all been talking about the rule of law, strong institutions, functional institutions. One of the critical things we need to do is to ensure that there is trust across the board. And this is not just about uh, Nanado not feeling secure. I remember when President Kufo was also president at Cape Coast, I think, for late President Atanos wanted to greet him with his own bodyguard mm-hmm. and led to a scuffle. Yeah. So we need to have another conversation around it. Okay. Because it cannot keep on going on. We live mm. in a dangerous environment, mm. and we know from Sierra Leone, Kosovo, Liberia, and La Côte d'Ivoire, the mm. way that these private, non-statutory security forces mm. can occasionally pose uh, problems in terms of their inclusion in formal security structures or the processes to demobilize them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Perfectly put. Now, um, uh, Dr. Bosmanasari, that that's obviously is a, is a major issue. I cannot trust the state security, so I need to train my own. And if the laws of this country allow for private security, what's the big deal in me having one? Uh, you know, one, one of the key challenges we have in this country, and this is an explanation that has been given uh, uh, concerning several African countries, we have what is called African exceptionalism. <laughs> the idea that Africans are very, very uh, exceptional. It will work in India, it will work in the UK. You come to Africa because it's Africa, it will not work. Ideally, I expect all political parties <coughs> to have confidence our security agencies, and especially the Ghana Police Service. But because of the patterns of repeated mistakes, etc., people don't really have that confidence in the security agencies. So the onus lies on whoever is the leader at any point in time. What can you do to engender that particular confidence so that even people who are outside the government will realize that it doesn't matter. These are people who are loyal to the Ghanaian state. They are loyal once you have deployed them to do A, B, C, and D. But coming to the private security, the law allows uh, private security organizations to operate. By for Ghana to make the progress, the leap we want to make as a country, I expect the politicians to have confidence in our uh, security agencies. Mm-hmm. I think it will be better for uh, the flag bearer of the MPP and his uh, running mate, the CPP, etc., to have the Ghana Police Service providing their security. Well, we know the law doesn't allow private security operators to use the gun. Yeah. I don't know if that component has changed. Mm. So in terms of protection, I know they will be so limited in certain but, but things why, they can why do. Why do you think that is so? When the law, we have the Arms and Ammunition Decree or Act, it allows for individuals, you and I, to, possess. to own a gun, even though guns of a certain class. So why is it that a private person trained to provide security <coughs> is not allowed to hold a gun. Can't he, as an individual, okay. go and license a gun? Well, I, I, think, I, I think I still support that particular law. Okay. The reason is that, let's be very frank with ourselves, most of the people who are engaged as private security operators, mostly they are school dropouts, people who don't really have a lot of uh, societal, <laughs> many challenges. So if we are not very careful and we careful allow... That because some uh, of them are not dropouts. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, so if we allow them to mm. wield weapons, I think we are going to have that. For individuals, let's say Mr. Faber, uh, Honorable Minister, no, Mr. No, no, Baku, he's say, he yeah. saying, that, <laughs> <laughs> he saying that I want to... We, people know that these are people we can easily identify we know their location mm. so i think that law is still very very good we shouldn't allow but the political parties ipac all of them must come together what can we do so some that we can have persons they are retirees uh, some of them are people who have left the service and perhaps they've got they've gotten a, a private security entity where they are paid more and so they, they leave can... yeah no we i think we can make certain exceptions mm. some individuals can be allowed but the question is looking at how volatile our country is you look at the countries, if we allow that, we may end up creating so, serious problems. So, Clarence, uh, uh, 2012 uh, election, mm. it was not until November, just about a month to the election, that the Ghana Police Service provided, provided even those ones, we call them escorts of course. Mm. for Nana Kufado. Why? And just After 20 something years of practicing uh, multi party uh, democracy, democracy. Why, why should they be that? Um, I mean, people, flag bearers are elected, and then we leave them to fend for their own security. And then when people uh, uh, so take steps, 
to protect themselves. You say they, they are doing military training. No, but you must take steps that are caused for them. But Samson, what is military training? Why do you train somebody to behave like a military man? A military man. We would be, <laughs> that, that, a, that, would, a, that would be defined in court. Unconscious military training. Absolutely. Because, because, absolutely. because otherwise, <laughs> Asafo, the yeah. Asafo people, Compa they, all, of them all of them are doing military yeah. training. <laughs> those who fire muskets, those who fire muskets, those who fire muskets at festivals yeah. and funerals, mm -hmm. it is yeah. military training. Okay. And even with the two main parties we have in Ghana, we can be. The prosecutor in the matter is my friend. He's called A. I don't envy him. I don't envy him. I'm not sure all. whether uh, the absence of an automatic mechanism mm. to provide security for persons of a certain mm. caliber justifies the see. formation of a private army. Okay. Okay. I see yes. You see, 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 Mm -hmm. On a tour in the Upper East Street, you said yes, that with yes. policemen. <coughs> I'm that. sure that he got it because he requested mm -hmm. for it. It was not an automatic. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's a reasonable inference to make. Has the police ever turned down any request from any known leader of any political party Sam for him to be provided with security? Samson, Samson. So he, I don't think that the, oh, is oh, 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 what he's saying is like, not correct. Let, let me tell you. Let you see, have leaders have leaders of the NDC not resorted to private security? I'm not aware. You see, but I'm not aware that. The police have turned down, or the leaders of the NDC have made a request. That's not an answer for, to my question. For, I'll, I'll, I'll Private come to your security point. I'll protection. Come to your point. You see, there's a difference between having two or three young men working behind you <laughs> and purporting to be providing you with security, security, and going all out to train people for the purpose of providing you with security. Oh, what is the fear? You see, something. First of very, all, very, you see, inherent in Dr. Dr. Bosman, you see, we are not jittery. We've beaten another twice, mm. oh, including the time when how you he was the candidate of a ruling party. To. What is the fear? You Please. see, Dr. Mm. Asai made a point, mm. which is significant. That's, that's, these that's people the that you are training are not the permitted by law. Train, you see, as you say, these people are not and permitted by law. For, for, for purposes I'll of disrupting the elections, is that it? Dr. Asai made a point that these people that are supposed to be undergoing training now are not permitted by law to hold arms. Mm -hmm. Exactly how are these people going to provide you security? They were involved if, in no oh, combat training. But your national chairman please. says that the reason why they are being trained is that the life of yes. your flag bearer and his running mates yes. are under threat. It I'm is saying, true. How is somebody not holding weapons for to this arm? To this arm, arm those who are telling me, sorry, to you are telling me that when people are, are, are holding, there were earlier communications <laughs> by the party <laughs> you are that them. said that they were going to be Can't engaged in this crowd control, control yes. and yes. things. Yes. And then the, the chairman also comes and elevates it to a point where, obviously, it's a police officer you need. Exactly. With a gun. I'm telling you, I'm making the point. Even public officials, like ministers, it is not automatic that you are given a bodyguard. You must request for it, and then make arrangements to have it. Mm. Now, when you request for it, they even train the officer specifically mm. to handle that aspect of security. Okay, but you see, Sounds, I yeah. think mm. what will happen mm. is, is that all leaders of that caliber mm. must have state protection. Indeed, I have told you also that the <laughs> MPP themselves, they claim to have an internal security arrangement at the mm -hmm. high office. Yet, when that office came under attack, or better still, when some violence broke out, the so-called invisible forces who are internal party security were unable to handle. You called the police. In fact, private security organizations, when they are confronted they call with the crisis, who did they call? They call the so why do you then waste time Samson. as mm. parties Samson. claiming to be mm. training okay. young doctor, men okay. to provide us the with security? The, the, the doctor makes a very important point about trust. Yes. No, so Kuku earlier in see, time, Kuku Baku earlier in time something. talked about the raid on see, the MVP head office. I don't think that that, no, that, no. that can I, 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 can a group of Nigerian, a group of Ghanaian actors, rookie actors, uh -huh. led by a, not, a notable Nigerian actor called Hank Sanuku. Uh -huh. It was around midnight. They uh -huh. were staging, uh, they were shooting a film on the Spinters Road. Residents uh -huh. felt uh -huh. that it was um, uh, an armed robbery attack. Yes. They called the police. The police went there, arrested them. The police said they were going to arraign them before court. I, I'm telling you for a fact. What is that suit number? What is that criminal okay. case number? Because the they case? had toy guns and they were using all kinds of flares to uh -huh. create. Imagery of, yeah. of that. The mm -hmm. police went into it and realized that, look, 
Yeah, so they, they yeah, so understand exactly. the facts. Yes, yeah. they, they, they yeah, there was no, there was no yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm saying yeah. that mm -hmm. in this instance, when matters come, mm -hmm. the initial communications that are okay. put out, Okay. They all the go to create right. trust issues for the police. What is now, now, because you don't need rocket science to, to let's know, let's know that this Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. The, final, the final word. Right. The final word. From personal to unlawful training. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. This is a huge demotion. But that has not come from official sources. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The final word to go on the way forward with the protection of political leaders. Sorry, 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 sorry. Quick, quick. The bottom line, of course, is the issue that has been raised in terms of trust and mm. yeah. confidence. Mm. And we'll be, we have to, we, we've all been guilty in mm. terms of as a nation. But we better start building the confidence. confidence yeah. I would appeal to the Ghana police to give us a situation report mm. on the raid at the MPP headquarters. Because so there's also guns. Lack of trust. In the police service, because that matter has not been closed. It's just one little example. I don't think example. that it is fair to the police. There are any number of cold cases. No, 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 no. <laughs> hold on, hold on. This is this is relevant. Allow him to make so the point. Let's move on. Yes, please. I appeal to them. <laughs> oh, I appeal to them to reactivate <laughs> all the cold cases in addition to this one. That may satisfy my brother Felix. Yeah, <laughs> but that's all. Yeah. There's no debate. No debate. Debate. <laughs> the real key point I'm making. This is a recent case involving a particular political party who is also part of this unfolding saga. All right. The guns mm. were seized. Mm. I'm asking for a situation report on it. No problem. Okay. Because you remember, no, please, you mm. remember uniforms too, military uniforms too came up. Yes, because the, the guy confessed uh -huh. that he had so, uh, recruited yes, them no uh -huh. and uh, I mean, so <laughs> was clothing them as well. Yes, yeah, so it's relevant. Mm. Yeah. Now, two, you see, this private security arrangements for presidential candidates particularly and parties didn't mm. begin today. Mm. The last time I checked, all the presidential candidates from 1992 had some form of security arrangement around them that was not sponsored by the state, mm -hmm. but not a substitute for what the state can offer. Right. Meanwhile, the state offers some protection very late in the, in the day. Ca the day. So there's always a certain missing link. We have to address ourselves to how to go about it. You remember Professor Mills' bodyguards mm -hmm. clashing with the presidential security Yes, Dr. Kosiani referred to that. At yeah. uh, mm. Cape Coast. Mm. So it's a fact that they've all been doing it. Mm. We can find ways and means of addressing that problem. That, for me, is the way forward in this matter. You know, but uh, this issue, this particular issue, should not be underestimated the distortions and the misrepresentations do not help for us to come to this consensus mm. that we are talking about. Well, eventually it's uh, gone to the court. Let's see yeah. how, no, how it plays no, out in it's, the court. It's, the court matter mm. is different. Mm. It's still distinct right. from all these allegations of threat. I don't believe mm. that the president will preside over a terror operation right. relative to Nanado. I don't believe that. Okay. Let me be honest with you on that. But that doesn't mean there could be no guys there the who would want to do things to hurt mm -hmm. Akufuado or any other presidential candidate mm -hmm. in the course of the campaign. That's why the overriding point is for the state to begin to actually engage the parties. And then the time frame of when protection is offered. Yeah. I mean, this way we move forward as a nation. Okay. Okay. Um, interesting there. Sure. And... and um, well, the, the, the police and the BNI also ought to take note that the, the procedural processes before court and when you have stepped into the court, you ought to take care of that because those matters could lead you to lose a case. That's and right. so That's if you want to do a good case, you know the <laughs> follow Balkan, due process. You know the Balkan energy arbitration <laughs> that took place? You know, uh, police officers went to arrest the... Uh, what do you call a manager of Balkan right. energy, right. Mm. you know, and detained him over the split table. When yeah, they we went got, for arbitration, we for yeah, fifty thousand yes. dollars. When we went for arbitration, yeah, okay. No, there's like one thing that I forgot. Again, the trust element. Mm. You recall Mr. Rawlings's experience. Yes. When there was a redrawal of his mm -hmm. military guards, yes. those that had worked with him, police, mm -hmm. and yeah. replaced by the police. Yes. yes. Still state security, yes. but he insisted that he yes. wanted those, those military people. guards yeah. 
-hmm. It became a, a okay. court case. The mm -hmm. NDC went to court, except mm -hmm. that they retreated eventually. Mm -hmm. Again, that was a matter of trust. Mm -hmm. So, so why not? The the leaders should be given the option to choose if they know. Yeah, no, that's not for them. They're letting them come out. They're letting them come out. And even ministers. Who no, they want. Even yeah. ministers. Yeah. Yeah. When you want a police guard, mm. the police authorities will tell you. Are you a minister or a deputy I'm a deputy minister. Yeah, deputy minister is what I'm entitled to. No, but you're not a minister. But I haven't said I'm a minister. You're allowed to vet them. Oh, you said a minister. Sometimes they will even ask you, do you have any relation? Or somebody you know within, within the service, service. who would like. Okay. Okay. So bring the person's name. Give us the particulars. They will do some background. That's not bad. And then they will train you. Yeah, right. But, but the overall, to do the that. substantive yes. thing is that mm -hmm. if the state institutions will begin to act mm -hmm. more professionally, mm -hmm. it will yeah. help also. Right. Okay. It Don't forget. Look, yeah. uh, this one is out out of the window. Mm -hmm. I met away. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, he was sent to the flaster house by the police administration. Yes. Somebody well placed, mm -hmm. and he had a duty, a uh, uh, mission to fulfill that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, who, who sent you? How many? <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. He okay. was, now, he was now, arrested, now, but he was let me, let, me, let me share some of the comments that have been brought in, and then we'll take a quick break and return to ask whether the pastors and the churches uh, should not rather see what is coming at them as the prophecy in the Bible <laughs> that this will happen in the end times rather than get so alarmed and uh, bringing the police <clears throat> about them. Uh, thank you. Now, um, Atta Alziz. Al Abdullah says it is time Ghanaians look at the activities of the BNI. Here in London, MI15, uh, MI5 and uh, MI6 don't operate like this, and they are not above the laws of the UK. Uh, yes, it's good to speak about some of them and tell what we know about them, but sometimes when you go deeper, the things they do. <laughs> um, Gideon Ando says MPP must tell us the actual truth about those three people. Which crowd can 15 men control in this election year? How many people have they trained so far? <laughs> Akwesi a champion in Maryland. Only 10 <coughs> marshals mm, to okay. control the crowd. Uh, really in Maryland, yeah, USA yeah. says that uh, Kwachi Ofusu's submission concerning his association with the BNI clearly explains why the BNI has become a laughing stock of its uh, status as a national security apparatus when you have NDC politicians mingling with top officials of the BNI what do you expect the BNI has been turned into a uh, propaganda machinery no, Felix Ofosu Kwachi oh, Felix mm -hmm. Kwachi Ofosu is a, is a, is a, a minister deputy minister of communications he should have a right to contact the BNI and ask them to yeah. give information. Sure. So <clears throat> you relate to the public, particularly that the BNI doesn't have a public uh, yeah. relations outfit. Mm -hmm. I think they should do that. They should emulate uh, their colleagues elsewhere and do that. Uh, Benjamin uh, in London says we should be careful as South Africans are equally watching. Aquesia Safoe J uh, in Kwadaso says it is very terrible to have a politically uh, connotated institution like the BNI to exhibit such impudence in this country. What uh, people should know is that the BNI is a state institution, not a government institution in the hands of the NDC. One of the principles of our constitution has been violated in a rather painful manner. Uh, Bonti Benjamin Achime Bwakwa says, no serious security agency will reveal an ongoing investigation detail <clears throat> to a political party. National security is doing more harm than good to our dear nation. Atai Imoro in Wellensi says, Felix is trying so hard to score non-existent political points from this whole saga. The BNI said they have not found any ammunition with these uh, people. But now Felix is saying they found military uniforms and other items. Uh, Kwabina Chifo Praso says, in fact, NPP has shown that they are very diabolic. This move is unjustifiable. <laughs> Peter in Takwa says, please, how can the NPP put their trust in government after the raid of their headquarters in the middle of the night by the police in uniform and national security? Police and military, up to date, <clears throat> the government had not come out to deny or accept <clears throat> responsibility. Uh, thank you. We'll take a break here or return uh, to continue with the discussion, particularly the aspect that has to do with uh, 
the clergy and the churches that have come under threat.